Yeah, salam, brother uh, Maud Hussein. You're welcome. Yeah, I see you, brother Ayub Sharif, uh, brother Zuzan Isan. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> yeah okay since it's sounding clear i can move on with the program uh if god willing ah so we are here once again uh i think it's been a while like uh it's been a couple of weeks that uh the last time i did a program and my last program was about guidance our guide so as you all know i usually take up lectures whereby people have misconceptions and then find a day and then clarify such misconceptions away from people's mind. So as you all know, my name is Shaib Abdullahi. But I was billahi min shaitan rajim I seek refuge with Allah against the accursed devil. And yes, yeah, salam, sister Vanessa Jane Wilson. And who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah by perception? Or who invites to Allah and acts righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the Muslims. Hazi sabili adu ilallah ala basiratin ana wa mani tabani wa subha'ana lahi wa ma'ana min al mushirkin. Eh, salam salis. This is my way I invite to Allah by perception, I and whoever follows me, and glory be to Allah, for I am not among the mushriks, that is the idolaters. The truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Ya yuwallazina amanu taqullah. Wakunu ma'al sadiqeen. O you who have believed, or oh, who you believe, beware of God, that is reverence God, and be with those who are truthful, not with lies. Be with those who are truthful, who will tell you the truth as always. Don't be with the liars. Now, liars are those who, when they speak, they cannot prove whatever they tell you. They just use assumption or opinion or, you understand, hearsay. Now, a truthful person is somebody when he says something, he can actually prove it to you and show you the evidence. That that, that is what is a truthful person. Uh, salam, my sister Rashida Muhammad. You're welcome. Uh -huh, so, when when it comes to the religion, always deal with nothing but the but the truth. And people who speak with truth, they can prove it to you. And when people speak without the truth, they can't prove it to you. So always seek people who can prove whatever they say to you. That is the best form of religion, right? Now, uh, salam, brother Maroon Khalif. Yes, you're welcome. So, this is let's discuss Al Islam, whereby I take topics randomly based on the questions people ask me to clarify misconceptions about the deen and whatever you have. Uh, we all know this month is one of the months of uh, Al Hajj, that is the, the Hajj, the pilgrimage. Which some people will tell you, oh, Hajj means argument, Hajj means proof, Hajj means whatever, 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 whatever. Refusing to understand that in Arabic you have multiple meanings for a, a word, especially if it is a noun. It can have a multiple meaning. You understand? You can just understand the meaning of a word based on context and what God explains. Don't put your own meaning there to, to, to deviate people. You get the point. Uh -huh. So hereby, when I take diverse topics from the Quran, I see to it that I've lectured the people based on uh, the, the proofs from the Quran without using opinion and without relying on something they call lexicon because the lexicon wasn't created based on the Quran. It was already only created based on a different concept. Edward Lane, the lexicon he used to create the Arabic lexicons people are now assessing today was formed in Egypt and it wasn't based on the Quran. So pay that attention, right? Uh -huh. So there are, 
people mis misunderstand certain things thinking that okay if i want to understand the quran i will just use lexicon from another source to explain words in the quran it doesn't work that way because every era or every generation or every city or every country has its own way of using particular words which doesn't consign with another country so for instance if you go to uh like if you go to uh may let's say britain there is a particular word they might use in their country america doesn't use such a word you you get, you get it like if if you say if you go to let's say uh america and you go you use the word glasses like glasses it can be they mean glasses in a different context when a uk a british person also say glasses he he means something else you understand so you you need to understand when words are used in a particular generation or particular by particular people you need to understand their view of what they meant by that so you don't just go to lexicon and you tell me just just because you see the word solli or solla or salat somebody translated it as following closely then you out of your you know your shallow mind you go to the quran and say okay it means following closely uh, it doesn't work that way you you understand because whoever translated salah as following closely what didn't translate it based on the understanding god has so god has the clear arabic language he has the perfect arabic language so whatever source you are dealing with is only according to their understanding in that field that's when they give it that classification you you get you get the point so this is why the quran came down chapter 16 verse 89 to do a clarification for all things but for muslims a muslim is somebody who has submitted to god right aha uh-huh. so for people who have submitted to god they know the quran do clarification to all things so it is not about when somebody term himself as quran alone follower or quranist or whatever that is not necessarily the case you understand so you need to understand what god means by certain phrases and words he explains it by himself don't don't take understanding from any other sources and i said to understand a subject you need to know what a subject means before you can understand the context and then the content right so if chapter 22 of the quran the title of the ver- the chapter is called al hajj al hajj some people will say the debate no it doesn't mean debate some people will say the argument in that context it doesn't mean the argument no you understand now what they refuse to understand is salam brother hamza hussein what they re- refuse to understand is they don't they don't let god himself do the clarification and tell us what it means so before i take you to break things down i take you to chapter let's say chapter 24 verse 18 of the quran let's see how god breaks down the verses for us to understand certain concept in the quran so you don't go ahead bringing your own understanding and ideology and views to the So God says in chapter 24 verse 18 wa yubayyinu Allahu lakum ayat then he says wallahu alimun hakim and God clarifies the verses to you for God is omniscient and wise so God is the one who is clarifying the verses for us right he is the one who is clarifying the verses for for us and whenever we whenever we dispute in any issue and then we have to distinguish and know the truth in terms of elaboration you the human being should do the elaboration it, it still has to be god who has to do the elaboration and how do we know how god does the elaboration because whatever issue you have and somebody has to elaborate that means that person has to use a judgment and where should that judgment come from so we can see in chapter 6 verse 114 let's see what god says concerning how he has elaborated his own book for us to follow So when you go to Quran chapter 6 verse 114 God says Afa ghayra Allah abtagi hakaman wa huwa allazi anzala ilaykum al-kitaba mufassala Then he says wal ladhina atainahum al-kitaba ya'lamuna annahu munazzalun ah min rabbika bil haqq fala takununna min al-mumtarin So shall I seek a judge listen carefully shall I seek a judge other than God Allah while he is the one who has revealed to you the book 
explained in detail. So if I have to judge a concept and we have to talk about salat and you have to judge for me and you go outside the Quran to tell me somebody translated the word salah as following closely, it means you are not in your right senses because somebody else is judging that meaning for you to tell you salat means this. So which means the Quran couldn't clarify all things for you in the first place. Do you see my concept here? So now, so shall I seek a judge other than God while he is the one who has revealed to you uh, the book explained in it or elaborated? You understand? And those to whom we gave the book know that it has been revealed from your Lord in truth. So do not be of the doubters. Now, simply, Quran chapter 10 verse 37 tells us the Quran came to do confirmation of what was before it. So it means whatever the Quran is bringing into the Quran, it's not a new concept. It is a confirmation of something in the past, right? It is not a new concept for you to come and tell me Salat means following closely. For you to come and tell me Al-Hajj only means debate, the great debate. Somebody, some people will say the great debate, the great argument, the great whatever proof. Are you serious? Where are you getting your meanings from? You see how it works. Salam, uh, brother uh, Tahir. Salam, Murtaza Rahmatullah. You're welcome. Yeah, peace, brother Abdul Salam Ali. Aha, uh -huh. so you don't go and bring meanings outside the Quran, concepts outside of the Quran. You are messing up everything. And don't be surprised. This is why none of such people can face me live on a dialogue. None of them. Wallahi lazim. None of them. Such people who twist words and create meanings. None of them. Mention any for me. None of them can face me in a live dialogue. I will crush them. Seriously. You don't, you don't go to the book of God using opinions and your own views. Right? They will say, oh, look at Brother Shrive. He says he followed the Quran alone, but he believes in Salah as, as prayer. He believes in Hajj as pilgrimage. Are you, are you nuts? Come and disprove me on a live dialogue. Is it a big deal? Come. Live dialogue. Disprove me. Let's see. So that I will embarrass you for the world to see you. I love embarrassment. So if you can embarrass me face to face, you are welcome. You get the point. Islam, uh, Brazil. So shall I seek a judge other than God while he is the one who has revealed to you the book, the Quran you are using, the book explained in detail, Mufassala, elaborated. If God has already elaborated Salat, he has already elaborated Hajj. What, what is your issue of the words you are creating, following closely, whatever co closely, whatever debate, whatever? What is that? Seriously? Do you think uh, Salat only started with the Quran? Or do you think Hajj only started with the Quran? Quran is telling you it's a confirmation of a previous thing. So whatever concept you can find in any other book in the, pre in the past that the Quran confirms, that is the word of God. That's how it works. You don't bring your own meaning with your ignorance in understanding even Arabic. You go to lexicons to create new meanings. Are you, are you okay? Why don't you come to Finland and do the same with the Finland, Finnish syllables? I dare any of the so-called Quran hello followers who are creating new meanings for words. I give you an assignment. Take the Finnish language. Use your lexicons. Translate Finnish language in the perfection for me. I'm waiting for all the people out there who are using lexicons to create new meanings in the Quran. I dare you to try it with Finnish language. Stay in America, stay in Africa, stay in China, and use lexicons to create a, a, a perfect grammar or understanding of concept in a Finnish language. I dare you to do that. And see if you don't study Finnish language, if you can do it and see how it is. So don't play with the words of God, with your naivety. You go and take the words of God and you say, Salat means following closely. Oh, Hajj means the debate. <laughs> Are you nuts? <laughs> hey, what kind of uh, 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 mockery is that? <clears throat> and to make it, to top it, to make it more like weird and, and uh, on the top notch, they, they will tell you oh, there is nothing like ritual in Islam. I what what the what the hell do you think Islam is about? Huh? Do you think Islam is based on your desires? Seriously? Or you, you forgot to understand the meaning of ritual even? For people who are telling you there's no ritual in Islam, tell them to define the word ritual for you. 
tell them to define ritual for you. Simple. I don't think they understand the meaning of ritual at all. At all. Ask them, what is their academics? Have they even been to school before? If they understand, did they, is their teacher even alive to explain what ritual is for them? So what is it with your opinions? Huh? And to make it worse, this guy in the Quran-centric page, when he put a disclaimer, he's about to start at any lecture or anything. He put a disclaimer and he says, this understanding is only based on my view and understanding at this moment. But any uh, uh, further proofs can change. Like, my view can change. Are you serious? You come giving people lectures on Islam and you are using your views and opinions and understanding at that moment and telling people it can change. Why even put a video on you to talk about what you don't know about the Quran? Because chapter 7 verse 33, God says to speak about God, what you do not know is haram. So if you know, why should you change? And if you don't know, why do you speak about it? This is what I don't get. You understand? You are making a mockery and a stupid fool out of yourselves. And this is why I keep daring people, step forward for a life dialogue. Do you see them stepping forward? They don't. What are they scared of? I don't get it. Now, <clears throat> to understand the concept of Hajj, you need to do let God do his own clarification for you. You don't bring your own meaning outside the Quran. So like I said, chapter 16, verse 89 tells us clearly. Chapter 16, verse 89 tells us the purpose of the book God gave to Muhammad to bring to us, right? So we are going to check the purpose of that particular book. Then to draw the conclusion of what Hajj is about, then we can get the answer from the clarification God has done. Not from lexicons and not from somebody else. So chapter 16, verse 89. God says, and the day we will raise among every people, every nation, every group of people, a witness against them. That means a witness who has witnessed what they have done, who has been with them. Right? <laughs> uh, you know, the prophets in the past, God never spoke to them in Arabic language. There is no proof of such. You understand? And God speaks every language. Among his signs is the, uh, you know, difference in languages. Chapter 30 of the Quran, verse 22, God, God understands multiple languages. So he, did, he does not send a messenger on, uh, except with the, by the language of his people. So if I'm sending you and I tell you something, I'm sending you in the you know, language of your people. So similarly, if God has to communicate to your people, he has to communicate to them in their language. So God will not come to Ghana and communicate to Ghanaians in Finnish language. No, it doesn't work like that way. So if you remember Quran chapter 7, verse 155 to 157, God communicated with the children of Israel, 70 people when they came to meet God. He communicated with them. So if that is the case, what language did he speak to the children of Israel? Arabic? No, they are not Arabs. You, you get my point. So he spoke to Moses directly. What language? Arabic? No. Moses was not an Arabian. So this is the point here. Uh -huh. So whatever people try to create, they bring misconceptions and then it twists everything. Right? Good. And the day we will raise among every nation a witness um, against them from themselves. And we will bring you, Muhammad, as a witness against Ha'ulahi, that is these, his people, the, uh, among the Arabs he has stayed. And God says, and we have revealed the book to you, Muhammad, because Muhammad brought the book, the Quran, to us. Chapter 20, verse 2 to verse 3, chapter 28, verse 85, and then chapter uh, 27, verse 6, and then chapter what? Uh, uh, if I remember chapter... Maybe we have a lot of the chapters, if I don't remember. Now, and we will bring you as a witness against these. That's his people. Then he says, and we have revealed the book to you as clarification for all things. And when we say all things, remember, the Quran is not talking to fools. It's talking to intelligent people. So when we say all things, we are not here to tell you the Quran clarifies how to use your television or how to use your laptop or how to use the glass or how to use your air fryer or electric cooker. 
That is not the point. A fool will ask you this question. You say, oh, if the Quran is a clarification of all things, show me where it says I should drive a car. So as a clarification, the word tibiyana, that is bayan, it comes from the word bayana. So bayana is like to clarify, to elucidate, to declare. You understand? As a clarification for all things, that is, it will explain for what, why did he say all things? And he says, as guidance and mercy and good news for what? Muslims. So to Muslims, to a Muslim who is a submitter in the religion of Islam, the Quran, the book is to serve as a clarification for all things that you makes you a Muslim. Do you get my point? Is to serve as a clarification for all things that made you a Muslim. So you being a Muslim, the Quran gives you good news. The Quran gives you mercy. The Quran gives you guidance. And it gives you clarification to every issue that you need concerning Islam. That's why you are a Muslim. So chapter 5 verse 3 says, Aliyawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum nimati wa raditu lakum islam adina. So God has approved the religion of Islam as a religion for you, right? So if you are a passenger in the religion called Islam, you are called a Muslim. That is how it works. Salam, Sister Awa Bashir. Uh -huh. So God has given you a book to serve as a clarification for all things. And God never used the word except. He didn't say except five salat, except 2.5 zakat, except this, except that. Those are what the fools and the hypocrites will tell you. They will say, oh, the Quran is complete, but it doesn't explain how to do your salat. Are you nuts? How can something be complete if something concerning the religion is not part of it? So whoever belongs to a sector and tells you, oh, the Quran is complete, but you don't find five salat, it means you are not okay. Seriously, simple. It means you are the kind of fools God is talking about. Yes. How can a constructor who constructs a building will tell you this building is complete? Then he'll come back again and say, hey, wait, wait, we have to do the roofing again. We have to do roofing. Then why did you use the word complete? Why is it completed? What's that? Do you get my point? Good. So chapter 16, verse 89 tells us that the Quran is a book which serves as a clarification for all things. That is concerning your religion. Because chapter 5 verse 3 tells you God has completed the religion. He has perfected the religion for you. So since he's complete, he has to give you a book which serves as a completion, a clarification for all things concerning what he has completed. The moment you start going outside the Quran to seek for guidance somewhere else, that makes you a mushrik. Because you are associating partners to God. Because which means God himself couldn't explain everything to you. You need an external source to explain something concerning the religion of God to you. So which means you are not okay. For people who don't understand why I'm using the term fool or okay, or uh, it's not me, it's God who use it. Chapter 25 verse 44 tells you that you think that most of them listen or reason. They are just like livestock. Apart from that, Quran chapter 2 verse 130 says, Who will desire other than the creed of Abraham, if not one who fools himself? So if I'm using terms as you are not okay, you are a fool, you are this, is not an insult. I'm describing your personality on what you are doing against the book of God. Simple. Now, so we can deduce from chapter 16, verse 89, and chapter 24, verse 18, and chapter 6, verse 114, God does his own elaboration of the book, and he does his own clarification of the book. As for perfection, perfection of the book, it can be found in chapter 11, verse 1, Surah Al-Hud, chapter 11, verse 1. Let's see the perfection of the book. God says, Alif Lam Ra, Kitabun Uhkimat Ayatuhu, so God says, a book whose verses, the verses you are, I'm reading to you right now, whose verses have been what? Perfected. That is mastered. When we say, oh, kimat, it is the highest form of being a master. Right? A master. That is a master. It has been mastered. Oh, kimat. Ah, come. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So, oh, kimat. And then, thumma fusilat. So it is not only imperfection or mastered, it is what also does elaboration, right? It, is, it has been elaborated. 
Then God says, by whom? Not by Muhammad. No. By Milladun Hakimin Khabir. It is done by the wise and cognizant. That is God himself. This book wasn't elaborated by a human being. Neither was it perfected by a human being. It was perfected by God himself. Right? Because it's a book of God. Quran chapter 10 verse 37 testifies to that. Nobody else can form this type of book except God. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so when a book has been perfected and then what? Completed and then done everything done by perfection by God himself, not by anybody else. I expect the answers to come from God. I don't expect answers to come from another source. Do you get my point? I don't need further explanation from somewhere. When somebody uses the word that, oh, where is the tafsir of the Quran you are following? I need to know the tafsir before I can believe whatever you say. Then you take him to chapter 25, verse 33. Then you ask this simple question to whoever is asking you to bring the tafsir. Ask them this simple question. Quran chapter 25, verse 33. He says, وَلَا يَعْتُونَكَ بِمَثَلٍ إِلَّا جِيْنَاكَ بِالْحَقِّ وَأَحْسَنَ التفسيرة. So God says, and they do not come to you with an instance, example, argument, whatever they bring to you, huh? or a case. But we have brought you, Muhammad, the truth. So we know the truth comes from God. Chapter 10, verse 32. And what is there after the truth, if not error? Except error. فَمَازَ بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا دَلَالٍ فَمَازَ بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا دَلَالٍ because after the truth, what else do you have? If I ask you one plus one and you tell me two, what else do we have to add? It's two. What, what else? You have to say point zero or point one. What, what is that for? So God is saying, what is there after the truth? Chapter 10, verse 32. So now God says, and they do not come to you with an instance, with an argument, with a case, with, a, with a, uh, an example. But we have brought you, Muhammad, the truth. And best in explanation or commentary, that is tafsir. When we say tafsir, when you hear the sectarians always saying tafsir, tafsir, tafasir, tafasir is the plural form of tafsir. They will say, which tafsir of the Quran do you follow? They will say, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Taymiyyah. Whoever believes in these things is, 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 is not okay. Yes. Uh, there is a word called kaput. He's kaput in the head. Whoever thinks there is a tafsir, actually, which overrides the tafsir of the Quran itself. I'm serious. Regardless of the position of the person, he's not okay. He's mentally unstable. God says they do not come to you with an instance. So if, let's say, Muhammad himself was given, given a tafsir of the Quran by God, and Muhammad himself cannot do the tafsir of the Quran because God has already given him the best tafsir, to, to, in the Quran. How come you are following the tafsir of Ibn, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Taymiyyah? So are they more smarter than Muhammad even? I don't get it. Are, well, are they more smarter than the Prophet? For you to use their tafsir so they can explain the Quran, not even Muhammad. <laughs> hey, sectarians, what is wrong with these people? No wonder they cannot face me face to face. Seriously. No wonder. So, God says, we have brought you the truth and the best in explanation because when God says, we have brought you, huh? we have brought you the truth because the truth, after the truth, there's nothing else except error. God says it. Chapter 10, verse 32. So after the truth, the only thing you find is error. So after the Quran, whatever somebody will bring to you and say, this is the tafsir of this, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn, Ibn this, they are all for error. This error. Try an error. You know, sometimes when you try to put in a password and your password is wrong, you put it, pack, 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 then it gives you red ink, error, pang, 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 error. If you look, if you like, do it thousand times, it will still be error because it's wrong. Do you get my point? So this is why they keep creating jumbles of tafsirs, tafasirs for you. They will tell you, follow the uh, tafsir of Ibn Kathir, Ibn Abbas, Ibn this, Ibn that. And that's why they have the sectarians all over. Everybody is crazy. Now, if these people are telling us that Muhammad is the best mufassir of the Quran, listen, they have taken the position of God to give to Muhammad by saying Muhammad is the best mufassir of the Quran. Whoever says this, please check him well. It's not okay. 
Seriously, I'm telling you. When God is the one doing the tafsir of the Quran, and you say Muhammad is the best mufassir of the Quran, it means you are challenging God. You are a mushrik, and you are not okay. You are not in your right senses. I'm serious. And whoever I face face to face, who says the same rubbish at me, I will tell him, you are not okay. You are a mushrik, and you are not okay. You understand? Because God has given you a ahsana tafsira. In Arabic, this is soifat tafsir. That is called superlative. Now, superlative is a comparative word. When we say best, when you say something is the best, is there anything superior to that? No. The moment you say something is the best, nothing can be superior than that again, unless inferior. So if God says he has brought you the best in tafsir, and you still tell me, I need to follow tafsir of Ibn Kathir, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Abbas. Wallahi, you are not okay. You are crazy. You are 100% a lunatic. I hope you get my point. So God says, he has brought you the best in tafsir. So the Quran does its own tafsir. Yours is just to understand the Arabic context God is talking about. That is it. Then you are good to go. You understand? Uh -huh. So, when we when we say Hajj, chapter 22, it talks about Al-Hajj, right? So, let's not translate Al-Hajj. We want to know, what is the purpose of Hajj? Who are we doing Hajj for? Who are we supposed to do it for? Don't let anybody give you his opinion. Somebody who says it's a must, as a Muslim, you have to go to Hajj. It's not a must. It's a lie. Hajj is not a must. Yes, Hajj is not a must. Do you know what is a must in your, in your deen? Do you know what is actually compulsory in your deen? So let me show you what is compulsory in your deen before we go to Hajj. The only thing compulsory in your religion mandated on you to do, which if you don't do, you will be held accountable by God as a believer. This is what? Chapter 98, verse what? 5. Where God says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ Chapter 98, verse 5. He says, Wama umiru illa liyabudullah, muh lisina lahu dina hunafa. Wa yuki musalata, wa yutu zakata, wa zali kadina lukayima. God says, and they were not commanded, they were not mandated, they were not what? Ordered. Except, except. To serve God, that is to worship God. Huh? Pledge your, servants, uh, your service to God. Sincerely devoting to him the true religion, the correct religion, the orthodox religion, devoted to God. Establishing what? The salat, the litany. Establish it. Because constantly it gives you the remembrance of God. Right? That's why God says in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 152, 153, between the two, yes, it says, Askuruni He says, remember me, I will remember you. And be grateful to me and do not be ungrateful to me. That is disbelieving God, right? So by the remembrance of God, we use the Salat to remember God. Chapter 20, verse 14. So we use the salat for the remembrance of God. So constantly to remember God with it. That is the salat. Right? So now God tells you, they were not commanded except to serve God, to worship God, sincerely devoting to him, the religion, the true religion, devoted to God. Establishing the salat and giving what? The charity. To give charity constantly. Then God says that is the valuable religion. That is what completes your religion for you. That is what completes the deen for you. You can see in this context, there is nothing about hajj. There is nothing about fasting. Because those things are not mandatory. No. That is why we call them optional. They are optional. When something is optional, it doesn't become mandatory. Optional, which means limited for certain group of people if they are capable to do it. Do you see how it works? Good. So now, 
let's go back to Hajj. We want to understand why do we do Hajj and what is the purpose of Hajj? Who asked us to do Hajj and why? Why? So now I'm taking you to the answer. Anybody who asks you, why do you do Hajj? This is where you can find the answer. It's in chapter 3, verse 96 to 97. That is where the answer is. First of all, God says, Inna awwala baitin wudiya linnas lalazi bibakkatan. Then he says, Mubarakan wa hudan lil alameen. Then God says, Fihi ayatun bayinat makamu Ibrahim. Then he says, Woman dahalahu, Kena aminan, Walilahi ala nasi hijul baiti. Mani stataa ilay sabila. Then he says, Woman kefara, Fa inna laha ganiyun anil adamin. Now the verse says, Chapter 3, verse 96, it says, Indeed, the first house, some people again, out of their naivety by not understanding Arabic words, will tell you the word bait doesn't mean house. They will tell you it's an institution. They will tell you it doesn't mean house. It means something else. No problem. Let them keep playing with the words. It's just like me coming to an English language, taking my own lexicons and say, no, house doesn't mean house. House means bathroom. You understand? I tell you, oh, sports doesn't mean sports. Sports means to kill each other. So God says, indeed, the first house set up for mankind, that is dedicated for mankind, was that which is at Bakka, blessed and a guidance for all people. Now, the house is to serve as a guidance for all people. There's a reason why the house is there. And we are going to find a reason. Then God says, verse 97, Therein, fihi, therein, are signs as proofs. Therein, in that house, there are signs as proofs. Then God says, the place or the position of what? Abraham. Is the place that Abraham stayed. Yes, he, he was based there. In chapter 14, verse 37, you read down, was, you see the evidence that Abraham left his family there, at the valley of the valley. There. You understand? That is where he left Ishmael. And then Ishmael's descendants became Arabs later on. On that uh, part of the land. So the place of Abraham. Then he says, whoever enters it, you can see it is a house that needs to be entered. Whoever enters it uh, will be safe. And upon the people is a what? Hijjul bait. That is what? To do what? A pilgrimage to the house. Hijjul bait. To do the pilgrimage to the house. That is for God. So you are doing the hajj for God. You understand? The pilgrimage is dedicated to God, not anybody else. Uh -huh. So you are dedicating the Hajj for God. You are doing it because God wants you to do. You are not doing it because Saudi Arabia wants you to come. Or you are not doing it for Prophet Muhammad. Neither are you doing it for somebody else. But God sees you are doing it for him. So he says, Walillahi ala nasi hijjul bait. And he's, he didn't say, Walillahi ala al-mu'mineen. Hajj is not only for the mu'mins. Everybody can go to Hajj. American, Asian, Caribbean, African, uh, Chinese can go to Hajj. You don't, you don't, God didn't say coming to the Hajj is for, for only believers. This is what you need to understand. God didn't say walillahi ala nasi. Uh, had he said the moments, just like the Salat is only for moments. Chapter 4, verse 103. Salat is only for believers. Salat is not for everybody. Yes, listening to me carefully. Salat is not for everybody. Do you see how it works? Just like the Zakat is only for believers. Not for everybody. Because that is what the believer has been mandated. Right? Good. Now, 
When you take the context of chapter 3 verse 97, when God says, Walillahi ala nasi hijjul bayt, man istataha ilayhi sabila, which means it's for every type of people. They can come to Hajj. They can do pilgrimage to come and visit the house, to see the house. Because when the context of the verse started, chapter 3 verse 96, it says, Inna awwala bayti wudiya lil nas. It didn't say wudiya lil arab. No, did he say wudiya lil mu'mineen? No, lil nas. For the people. So it's a sightseeing. It's just like a museum. When a museum is built, any, anybody can go. It doesn't have to be only the science students. If it's about science, it doesn't mean only science students can go to the museum. You can even take kids to go and see the museum. It's about visiting the place, a pilgrimage to the place. You understand? So God says, Walillahi ala nasi hijjul bayt mani stata'a ilayhi sabila. Now this is the interesting part. Mani, mani stata'a ilayhi sabila. For whoever is capable to the way to it, or whoever is capable of the way to it, of the means, Sabila can be means or way. So if you have the means to go, fine. You are a human being, go. That is the pilgrimage. So somebody will say, okay, why is it that now they limited it to Muslims and they say, if I have to go, I have to make sh shahada because tyrants are in possession now. The ones who are in possession are mushriks. They are not actually dedicating it to God. Whatever is there is dedicated to Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Hadith, whatever. It's not for God anymore. So they are doing it for their own, own selves. Do you get my point? So God says, Therein are signs as proofs, the place of Abraham. Whoever enters it. God didn't say whoever visits the house. You enter it. Ask yourself, do they allow people to enter it? No. But they allow the prince, eh? the honorable people in Saudi Arabia, they enter inside to go and do whatever they want. But how come you, the, honor, the, you, the human being, you are not allowed to go inside and see the miracle or the signs inside? So then why do I need to do the hajj? When somebody in charge of that house now is not a believer or is not dedicating himself to God, why will I go there? Do you get my point? I don't need to go there. And it's not mandatory for me to go. Because God says, Mani ilayhi sabila. He says, for whoever huh, has the means to it, if I'm capable of the way to it, then I can go. But since somebody who is in charge is against the way I want to do my hajj, why will I go? I don't need to. Yes, I don't need to. Because this is a voluntary thing. It's optional. It's not mandatory by God. That you have to go to Hajj. You must go to Hajj. As some Muslims think. They say, oh, no, I'm growing old. I have to go to Hajj at least before I... No, no, don't force yourself. God will never caution you and say, hey, why didn't you come to Hajj? Why didn't you go? No, no, no. God is never an, an, an unjust God. You understand? You need to understand this concept. So as for those who disbelieve, then indeed God avails the works. You understand? So, Hajj is not only for believers. It's for mankind. It's for everybody. Right? And the Kaaba set forth there is not only for the Arabs. Neither is it for only for believers. It's for everybody. And Nas, everybody who wants to go there to visit can go. That is what God says. So, if you have this verse as evidence, give it to any mushrik you meet. Tell him, Hajj is not only for believers. And calling people to the Hajj is not only let for believers as well. So, I'm going to give you the evidence. So when we go to chapter 22 and we go to verse 27, when God asked Abraham to call people to come to the Hajj, did he only call believers? Who did he call? Let's go and see the answer. So when you go to chapter 22, verse 27, God says, Wa azin finas bil Hajj. Wa azin finas bil Hajj. And announce to the people or among the people, that is mankind, about the what? The Hajj, the pilgrimage. They will come to you. That is you, Abraham. They will come to you. Then he says what? By walking and by every means coming from every deep road. Huh? They will come from everywhere to just come and visit. Now what is the purpose after we visit that place? God says that, verse 28, that they may witness the benefits for themselves. The benefits of that place Come and witness for yourselves. And commemorate the name of God during the well-known what? Days. That is the days that you have come for the Hajj. 
because mostly it has to be three days. If you can't, you can do two days and go. So when you come, three days, you stay, you do your thing. So the well-known days over what he has provided for them of livestock animals. So eat of them and feed those who are miserable and the needy. Then verse 29, and let them conclude their quenching and let them fulfill their vows and let them walk around the ancient house. We all know the ancient house. That is the house you are doing the hatch to, to visit, right? So you walk around it. It doesn't say walk around seven times. No, the reason is when you go to a museum, I'll give an example. When you go to an ancient house or an ancient like sightseeing to see some history of from the museum, when you go there, you walk around. This walking around is, you are, you are enjoying, the, you're having the pleasure of what you're witnessing. So you keep walking around. It doesn't mean I have to walk around seven times. There's no way God says walk around seven times. The book of God is supposed to do the clarification of all things. Uh, Ardo, Ardo Meila Fore says, Say, what is the five pillars of Islam? There's nothing like five pillars of Islam in the Quran. So you can ask the sectarians that question. God never says there's five, five pillars of Islam. It doesn't exist in the Quran. No. Uh, Marun Khalif says, so the Hajj is to feed the needy of uh, the Hajj is to feed the needy of the people. No, that is not Hajj. It is included in Hajj, but that is not Hajj. I defined Hajj earlier on, chapter three, verse ninety-seven. The Hajj is the pilgrimage you do to the house. But what includes the pilgrimage that you are doing is what the feeding entails also. But Hajj is not only about feeding the people, right? Hajj, God says, told Abraham to call people to the Hajj. That is chapter 22, verse 27, right? Then verse 28 says that they may witness the benefits for themselves. So they come there to witness the house, to visit the house, witness the other benefits, which, which includes the Hajj, right? Uh, Venisa says, is Hajj meant to be all year round or specific time? Is specific time of the year. I'll be coming to that. Chapter 2, verse 197. They, they come specific time at the end of the year. Huh? They can be done in Shawwal, Zulkada, and Zulhijjah. Three months after Ramadan, you can do the Hajj. Yes. Uh, uh, the days. Okay, no problem. I'll be explaining that today before I end the topic. So you'll get to know the answer. Yes, Zuzan, Zuzan Isan says, walk around as in explore the area. Yes, as in explore. I will show you where you explore when you visit. So he says, Maru says, what are the benefits that they see? I'm going to mention the benefits. Huh? So you see the benefits. That they may witness the benefit for themselves and commemorate the name of God during the well-known days. So during those days, that is the, day, the days of commemoration over what God has provided. That is of the livestock animals that they sacrifice, right? So the sacrificial, that is what they call the feast. Uh, that is what eat, to have the feast for people to eat and drink, right? So eat of them and feed those who are miserable and the needy. So during that time, we will use the meat to feed people who are needy and miserable, who are poor. You will feed them around during the time of the hatch, right? And let them conclude their quenching and let them fulfill their vows, right? And let them walk around the ancient house. Around means you are walking around it to see. When we say around, we have Safa and Marwa there. Right, the rocks and the pebbles, you, they are just around the house, not far from each other. So you are walking around means you are going to sightseeing, exploit the area. So not only because of the house you are going to go, the Hajj includes certain activities you have to do there, and it's all entails in the Quran. It is not outside the Quran. So I'll be showing you that before I end. Right. So then God says, and let them walk around the ancient house. That is the Kaaba. That is the ancient house God has set forth the foundation since day one for the people. Right? So that is the Kaaba, the ancient house. Right? Now, so chapter 3 verse 97 explains to us what is the purpose of Hajj. Why are we supposed to do Hajj? It's a pilgrimage to the house. Right? When you go there, you visit the house. It's a visitation where you are, you are going to witness things. 
you go and witness activities and animals have to be slaughtered in order for people to eat and drink and quench themselves right then some people might ask okay then in which months are this hatch or in which months are this hatch observed but before we we understand the time of hatch it should be uh Yes, uh, Naz can. Yes, it has to do with that as well. Yes. Yes. Because at the time of Moses, yes, he, he also, there was the time of Hajj. It existed. They were also uh, witnesses to that time. Uh, for instance, uh, if I remember that verse particularly, it should be in chapter uh, 28. Let me confirm. Chapter 28, verse 27. When Moses was in Midian, to work for their father, his father-in-law. They spoke about an agreement concerning the Hajj. He says, he said, he the father of the, the in-law, Moses' in-law says, I intend to give you one of these two daughters of mine to marry so that you may compensate me for eight Hajj, hijaj, that is pilgrimages, right? For eight pilgrimages. So pilgr Hajj happens every year. So every year people go for Hajj. So according to chapter 28, verse 27, the father-in-law of Moses wanted Moses to compensate him for eight years of Hajj. So eight pilgrimages, right? So the word he used there is what? Hijaj. This Hijaj is about pilgrimage, right? So now in that context, it tells you that at the time of Moses, there was Hajj going on already. There was Hajj. It existed. Because Hajj started with Abraham at the time of Abraham, which I'm showing you the evidence, right? Good. So now, when we go back to the evidence, I'm going to give you next. When it comes to the timing for the Hajj, how to know the time is up, God asked the people to use the crescent, that is the moon, the new moon, the crescent, to, to locate the time of the Hajj. So which can be found in chapter 2, verse 189 of the Quran. Let's see what God says concerning knowing the time of the Hajj. Then I will show you in which months they occur, then you can know. So God says in chapter 2, verse 189, he says, yes, Kul hiya mawakitu linas wal Hajj. He says, they ask you about the crescents, that is the new moon. Uh, mood. Uh, Nas Khan says, wait, Nas Khan says, oh, the test has vanished. Uh, sorry if I cannot see all your tests, but some of the tests are disappearing, so I can't, I can't even, uh -huh. so Nas Khan says, Hajj is mentioned in the Quran, translated, oh, they had to slaughter the yellow cow. Quran confirms it. Torah says Moses said to Pharaoh. Uh, uh, yes, Korban can be performed outside Mecca. Yes, it can be done. Yes, you can slaughter animals out, outside the, the, the... It doesn't necessarily have to be in Mecca. I'll give you the answer. The answer can be found in chapter 2, verse 196 of the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 196. I'll be coming to that. You can slaughter animal without being in Saudi Arabia. It can be in your country. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the country. You understand? Okay. So, uh, yeah, brother Alfred, I see you. Salam. Peace. Agali Naganka. Salam alaikum. Aha. So, let's see this. Let's continue. So chapter 2, verse 189. Yes, aluna ke anil ahilla. That is kul hiya mawaki to linas wal hajj. He says, they ask you about the crescent. When we say crescent, it is the new moon which appears white and like C, the letter C, the new one, eh? which will be appearing in a few days by now. I think in five days time, you see a new one appearing. It marks the month of Zulhijjah, the month of the hajj. Even though hajj has already started. Hajj has started since Shawwal Zulkada Zulhijjah. It is not only one month. 
it is the Arabs who actually fixed it in one month to end the year. But it is not only one month. Hajj can be done in other months too, not only Zulhijjah, right? They only pinpointed Zulhijjah. That is why there is crowding, overcrowding there. Had they agreed with God and made it extended, then the crowding will not happen and people will not die. It will be easy for everybody. You understand? So this is the lack of following God's in, uh, instructions. So they ask you about the Christians, the, the new moon, Ahilla. God says, say, there are timings for the people. Linnas, he didn't say for the Arabs. Neither did he say for the believers only. There are timings for the people and the what? Hajj, the pilgrimage. So at the time of Hajj, we need to locate the new moon, the crescent, to be able to know it is time for me to go to Hajj, right? Now, so some people will say, okay, how do I know? Naskan is asking, is Hajj three months, three days? No, within the three months, any month you choose to go, in that month you go and do three days. That is how it works. Within the months, three months, if you choose to go in Shawwal or Zulkada or Zulhijjah, any of these three months you have chosen, in that month, then you go and do three, three days. That is how it works. So it has the, the greatest day. Whenever you do three, then you have the greatest day of it. That's how it has, three days. Now, when we go to chapter 2, verse 196 to 197, I'm going to show you in which months the Hajj can be done. But first of all, I'm going to show you uh, 197 before I go to 196 so that it can people can understand the concept more uh, clear enough. So I take you to chapter 2, verse 197. Let's see in which months the Hajj can be done, right? Verse 197. Right. So, uh, Joe Manaf says, how about the best 10 days of Zulhijjah? That is not from God. That is the concept from Hadith, not from God. God never says there's the best 10 days of Zulhijjah. Nowhere in the Quran did God say that. It doesn't exist in the Quran. Uh, Zozan Isan says, should Muslims not attending Hajj even sacrifice animals in their own country? Yes, I'm, I'll give you the answer soon. In chapter 2, verse 196. Yes. Is the sacrifice purely a ritual for Hajj? Yes, it is included in the, uh, the time of Hajj. Right? The sacrifice is included so that you can feed poor people. You dedicate it to God, but you feed poor people and everybody. You understand in your zone so that they can enjoy the benefits of the korban that is the sacrifice now chapter 2 verse 197 god says al -ma he says the month of the hajj the pilgrimage are well known or are fixed now when something is ma'lumat is fixed it's unchangeable you don't change it the months we are talking about ashur the shahar ashur is the plural form of shahar uh, so that this Ashur, God didn't say the Sharul, Sharul Hajj. He didn't say Sharul Hajj. If he says Shar, then there is one month for Hajj. He says Ashurul, Ma'lumat, they are fixed months. Right? Fixed month. Then God says, so whoever obligates, Farada, Farada, whoever obligates the Hajj in them, in any of the months, these three months, if you obligate, just like the Arabs have obligated, Zulhijjah as the month of Hajj. They gave it the name Zulhijjah to obligate it in only Zulhijjah. But according to God, based on you, the person, if you have obligated the Hajj in maybe Shawwal or Zulkada, you can do it. But this is what it entails. If you, have, you are preparing to go to do your Hajj in Shawwal, this is what you need to follow, the protocol. If you are willing to go and do it in Zulkada, we are still in Zulkada, uh, Zulkada you, this is the protocol you need to follow. Then Zulhijjah is next month. It's coming. Zulhijjah is also another month for the Hajj. There's a protocol you need to follow based on the book of God. So let's see. God says, so whoever obligates the Hajj in them in those months, thus he shall not behave obscenely. Rafatha, when we say of obscenely, to last after something, to behave obscene, like sexual desires and other stuff, you have to avoid. Neither act iniquity, 
no iniquity, no act of immorality. Right? Then no argue, jidala. Now this is what we call argument, dispute, argument. Some people will say hajj is the month of debate, is the main month of argument. Are you okay? Are you, are you all right? If it is the month of argument, how come God is telling you during the month of hajj, do not argue, jidala. If you are saying it is the month of debate, what debate? They say great debate, the, the month of debate, the month of argument. These people, where are they getting meanings from? Why don't you let God explain his own words? Now, God says, do not behave obscenely in the month of Hajj, that you are ready to go to Hajj. Do not act iniquity. Do not argue during the Hajj. <laughs> so if you say the Hajj, it means debate. It means argument. How is it that God is telling you, do not argue by using the proper word, jidal, jadala, the verb is jadala, that is to dispute, to argue. So God says, no argument, do not jidal during the hajj. And you are telling me hajj means debate, hajj means argument, because you refuse to study Arabic. You thought lexicons will teach you Arabic, right? Good. Then God says, and whatever you do of good, then God knows it. And be provided, which means when you are going for Hajj, you need to be prepared, provided, have your staffs with you. For indeed, the best provision is piousness, because the, what you are going to do at the Hajj has to do be based on piousness. That is what God needs from you. He doesn't need anything from you. He needs your piousness, your loyalty to him, right? So reference me. Oh, those of intelligence. That's why God keeps talking to intelligent people, not fools. If you are a fool, God is not talking to you. Right? Good. So chapter 2, verse 197, God tells us the heart is not meant for one month only. It's not only the Zulhijjah. Not only Zulhijjah. No. For those who want to know the month, the Ashurul Hurum, the holy month, the sacred month in the Quran, in the Islam, I have lectures on that. You can find it on my YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel, search for Bush 2G9. You will see the correctional officer. I have all my lectures there. You will see which months it starts. The sacred months start from Ramadan. But the month of Hajj starts after Ramadan. Then you can go for the Hajj itself. Right? Good. So now, chapter 2, verse 196. Let's see what God says concerning the Hajj. For people who cannot do the Hajj and the Umrah, what happens? God says, "Wa'atimul, wa'atimul Hajj, Hajja, wal Umrata lillahi." You understand? Wa'atimul Hajja, wal Umrata lillahi. God says, "And complete." When we use the word "complete," tamat, atimu, is to complete something, right? To make it complete, so you have to finish it. Right? So God says, and complete the Hajj, the pilgrimage. It is not talking about debate here. It is not talking about complete argument here. No. No. For people who are using the lexicons. Good. And complete the pilgrimage. Right? The one you are doing to the house of God. According to chapter 3 verse 97. Huh? To the bait. It tells you, and the visit for God. You are doing it for God because God asked you to do it. It is not Muhammad. It's not anybody who asking you to do. It is God asking you to do the Hajj and the Umrah. So you are doing Hajj and the Umrah for God, not for anybody. The Hajj and the Umrah for God. Now, what if I cannot go to the Hajj? And what if I cannot go for the Umrah? The Hajj is the, 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 the pilgrimage you do to the Bait. That is the Kaaba. That is the Hajj, the Bait al Atik. Chapter 3, verse 97. That is what we call Hajj. But when you go, you have to stay there for three days to do the Hajj and the Umrah. The Umrah is the visitations you are doing, visiting of the how you visit places. You visit Safa wal Marwa. You visit what? Arafah. You visit the what? Mashhar al Aram. That is Muzdali. They now call it Muzdalifa. Those are the places you visit. That is what we call Umrah, that visitations you are going to do. Now, but God says, but if you are prevented from going for the Hajj, to complete the Hajj and the Umrah, if you are prevented, then whatever will be easy of the word, al hadiyah that is the sacrifice, whatever will be easy for you. Do you see? 
Then God says, and do not shave your heads. This is a ritual following an instruction. It's a ritual. For those who tell you there's no ritual in Islam, just ask them, if something is there for me to keep doing continuously as a what? Custom. What is the definition? What does it mean? Is that not ritual? What is that? If I've been given a protocol to follow constantly, uh, for instance, whenever you come home, you have to take your shoes off before you enter your bedroom or whatever. That particular act, when you keep doing it as a costume const constantly, the definition is called a ritual. It becomes your ritual. Your ritual is to take off your shoes before you do this. It becomes a ritual. God says when you have to eat, mention his name before you eat. It is a ritual. If it's not a ritual, I don't need to do it. That is what a ritual is. Right? So when we say ritual, they think, oh, it has to be something like, a, you know, uh, like, you know, I don't know how they, 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 they understand the word ritual. But some people seem to misunderstand what we term a ritual. Now, so God says, and do not shave your heads until the sacrifice has reached its location. Its location means when you are dispersing the meat, after you have made the sacrifice and you have to share the meat to the people. Don't shave your hair till you are finished with the dispersion. Whether you have given the meat out, whether it's a mosque around your area, whether a, a place where people gather, where you can go with the meat and then people can benefit from it. Or you share it to the poor people, miserable people around you. So that they can benefit. After you can go and shave your head. Then God says. And whoever is sick among you. Or with him is an injury to his head. Because of the injury on your head. You cannot shave. Listen what God says. Then God says. Then a ransom. That means PDF. You ransom that act of fasting. Then you should rather what? Do fast. You fast. Then God says. Or arms. You give what? Arms. That is you give charity. Or what? A religious rite. That is what? Nusuk. You make an act of rit rit ritual, a different ritual, whereby you can compensate with the shaving of your head. Now, then God says, and when you are safe, if you are safe, uh, then whoever will be provided, it means when you are safe and you can go for the hajj, whoever will be provided for the visit at the what? Pilgrimage, the hajj. Then whatever will be easy of the sacrifice. Meaning, when you are able to go for the hatch, you have to do sacrifice there as well. When you are able to go there, you have to do sacrifice. Because not everybody has the capacity to do the sacrifice when they go for hajj. Not everybody has that capacity to be able to afford and do the sacrifice there. So now, you're the one who have gone there. If you are provided and can do the sacrifice, will be easy for you of the sacrifice. But then God says, but whoever cannot find, that is, if you have gone to the hatch, but you didn't do the sacrifice there, then fast for three days. You fast for three days during the what? Hatch. Which means you have gone for the hatch, but you cannot do animal sacrifice. So God says you have to fast for three days. Now, and seven, when you have returned, that means when you go back to your own country, when you have returned to your country, that is when you go and do the other seven days to make it 10 days as a compensation for not able to do the sacrifice. Even though you have done the hatch, but you are not able to do the sacrifice. So which one carries with it? The weight more is based on the sacrifice, animal sacrifice, right? Then God says, this completes 10 he says what? It completes 10. That is 10 days. Now it says, that is for those whose people, listen carefully, that is, this 10 days of fasting, that is for those whose people will not be attending the sacred mosque. That is Majid al-Haram. For people who are not going there, who will not be going to the Hajj, they have to fast 10 days. That is if they cannot sacrifice an animal. They will fast 10 days at their homes. So let's say, me, Shraim Abdullah, I'm not going for Hajj. I have made up my Shawwal, Zulkada, Zulhijjah, I'm not going for Hajj. According to God, since I'm not going for Hajj, I can slaughter an animal. But if I cannot slaughter an animal, make the sacrifice, what do I need to do? I need to fast for what? 10 days. It doesn't have to be consecutively. 
Because even if somebody goes to the hatch and cannot slaughter an animal, he has to fast there three days. And when he goes back to his country or home, he fasts seven days to make it 10 days. So which means it is not consecutively. So when you are at home and you know that this month you cannot do sacrifice, you cannot do any hatch, then you what? You slaughter an animal. Since you cannot uh, slaughter an animal, that's a sacrifice, sorry. Then you what? You do the fasting, abstinence for what? 10 days. Right? So God says that is for those whose people will not be attending their what? Majid al-Haram. And beware of God and know that God is severe in penalty. Uh, Nifi Gris says, me, is there, was in, uh, in, uh -huh. Nifi Gris says, I have a question. She said, what? Is there, there in Saudi Arabia Hajj, that day they slaughtered for me an animal. I paid the animal, they slaughtered it. F fine, you can do that. You understand? You can pay. You can pay for the animal, and then the, somebody slaughter is. Hey, Wanini. Wanini. Hello. Kuka. What happened? What are you want? Salim, wait. Make it easy. Yeah, thank you, Salis. Thanks for uh, Salam, brother Osam Abdurrahman. Salim, kaka kuwa na ya bukara damu. Salim, zo dam kule kupa zo. Hey, zo zo aiti uto ni zo chong kule kusama kaka cheke mbona zo zo dam. Hello. Zo. Yes. Yes, you can do that. You can fast. And as can you say, can I fast 10 days if I don't go Hajj every year? Now, this is the option. Chapter 2, verse 196. If you are not able to go to the Hajj, you have to now base on the sacrifice. And sacrifice doesn't actually mean you, the woman, you have to catch an animal by force. You can buy the animal and somebody else will slaughter it for you. Yours is just to share the meat to the people to the poor and the needy and whoever you want to give to. You understand? It is just to get the, the, the pious, piousness of that man, the piety of that month or that time, right? But if you cannot slaughter the animal, if you cannot do any sacrifice, that is when you do 10 days because not everybody can afford to do animal sacrifice. Not everybody can buy a sheep or a, a lamb or a goat or a cow. You get my point. Then, Salim, Zozo, Kupan, Enav, Zo, Kule, Zo. Uh -huh. Not everybody can afford that. So that is why God gave the option of the fasting of the 10 days. Salim, Kule, Kupan, Nang, Zo, Nang. Isauri. Zona, zo. Aha, you see. So the ten days is for those who are not able to what do the animal sacrifice. Canada more salim. Zona, zo. I do it. Wake up, Miss Catching Musumon. Look at your 
Kuka? Tone. Wa? Tone. Misa, misa. Nache nanga na Facebook nanga. Facebook, Facebook. Facebook? Eh, hey, wana Facebook. Nanga Facebook kika. Facebook. Hmm. Aiti weka zo, mche. Kuje karibu nga jeta ba aiti. Aiti. Hmm. Dure kufa. Kipeli. Hey, Ricky. Yes. Yes, Salim wanted to just say hi to everyone. Yeah. He's asking whether I'm, I'm on Facebook and I say yes, I'm on Facebook. Okay. So let's go on. Aha, uh -huh. so the, the fasting is for people who are not able to go to the Hajj and who are not able to do the animal sacrifice. Then they can fast for 10 days. But when you do the animal sacrifice, you don't need to fast. You understand? And if you go to the Hajj, you have to do animal sacrifice at the same time there. So when you do the animal sacrifice there, you don't need to fast. But when you go for Hajj and you are not able to do the animal sacrifice there, you have to fast three days over there. Then when you come back to your country or home, you do seven days to make it ten days. You understand? So it tells you the animal sacrifice carries more weight than even the Hajj itself. Do you see the point? Aha. Uh -huh. So purposely, that fasting is meant for the sacrifice, the Hajj. Yeah. You see? And it can be done. You can do yours in Shawwal, Zulkada, Zulhijjah, any month you want out of the month of the Hajj. You can do that. Now, also, we want to understand the, the capacity or the, the importance of that uh, animal sacrifice. Or like, what is the benefit? When you go to chapter 22, verse 36 to 37. Yes, uh, Naz can, exactly like that. You understand? The, the, she can slaughter the animal. She can buy the, 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 the animal, the livestock. Somebody can slaughter it for her by the name of God. Then she can distribute the meat to the poor and the needy of their community. Or she can send it back to a home country, which I have done multiple of times. I send money to my country. My brother, my big brother buys the, the lamb. And then they slaughter it and they share it among themselves and the poor and the needy also. And then they enjoy the meat. Mine is the piety behind it that is the piousness with, between me and god so i'm going to explain the piety the piousness on why people do that and if you cannot afford such that is when you have to fast for 10 days right and the fasting doesn't have to actually be consecutively you can do it three days you rest three days you rest then the other four days it, that god never said it's wrong to do it that way so let don't let anybody tell you you must do it 10 days consecutively no but at least you have to do it before the year ends because that is, we are still in the sacred months, right? Now, when you go to chapter 22, verse 36 to 37, God says, and the livestock of animals, that is the budna. When we said budna, they are animals which are ready to be slaughtered. It doesn't mean baby animals. It means the animals which are ready to be slaughtered, which are well fit, right? the budna, the livestock animals which we have made for you are among the rituals, the symbols. That is the rituals of God. That is the ritual God has set forth for the people. Rituals didn't start at our time. Rituals has been there. Animal sacrifice has been there since time, right? So now, which we have made for you are among the rituals of God. Sha'air Allah. Huh? There is good in them for you. That is, those are the animals. They are the benefits in them for you. Salim, Nazua, Nazua, please. Kaka zona. Kaka zona, Nazua. Hello. Hey, hey, Salim. Hey. Salim. <coughs> Salim, what happened? May. Ah, ah. Now pull the cover. Number in the car. Salim, in the car, she moved. Hello. Ah, 
eh kere kule kofa nan kule nam eh hey, kule kofa eh hey. kama bisa nan ka ja ha kule da karfi kira nan ka salim bari mana oh yeah ya welcome uh, naskan Hey Mike I see you a long time. How are you bro? Now so Quran chapter 22 verse 36 to 37 it says the livestock animal that is the budna which we have made for you are among the rituals of God. There is good in them for you that is the animals. So mention the name of God upon them in rows. In rows means when they are ready to be slaughtered. That is animal slaughtering. And when they are falling on their sides, then eat from them. That is after you have done everything about the animal to cut the skin and do the meat, the everything. Then he says, then eat from them. You yourself, the one who have slaughtered the animal, you can eat from it if you want. And feed those who are content, which means even somebody is rich, poor, not poor, you can feed them. Right? Feed those who are content and those who are miserable, those who are poor. you can feed them so it has to be equal you don't have to only share it to the rich people you can give it to your friends and then you give it to those who are what miserable as well who, who are poor then thus have we subjugated them for you perhaps you will be thankful you understand then 37 god never attains their meat nor their blood for people who think this ritual is the act of oh i'm cast lotting animals to give god the blood no God doesn't need the blood. Neither does he need the meat because he's not the one to eat the meat. The meat is for you and the poor and the pe- people around you to feed. Because we have certain poor people they will never get meat to eat till the it's time around this time of the year. That's the time they will get meat to eat. They have no money to go and buy lamb or cow or whatever. So this this are the time you have to feed such people. You understand? But what God uh, attains from you, he attains the piousness from you that is what god needs from you that is why he gave you the quran chapter 2 verse 2 he says zalika al kitab la rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqin so the quran is to serve as a guidance for those who are pious now to attain piety you have to follow the instructions he has given you in the book in order to attain the piety piousness so thus has he subjugated them for you that you may magnify god over what he has guided you so give good news to those who are what benevolent so some people might ask what type of livestock animals can i use for the animal slaughtering god has explained in chapter 39 verse 6 he revealed eight pairs of livestock for you god has revealed to you eight pairs of livestock which are they go to chapter 6 of the quran verse 143 to 144 you see the livestock animal god wants you to slaughter it start from what camel then we have cow then we have what lamb then we have goat so any of this type of animals this four both male and female male and female male and female that is eight any of that you use is allowed for the animal sacrifice and it's part of the rituals god has put forth for those who are saying there's no ritual please let them find me for a live dialogue please i beg them find me for a live dialogue now so we can see the notion of the hajj here first of all you are making the pilgrimage to the house that is what kaaba to go and visit the ancient house apart from that you be staying there for at least 3 days god says there is no problem if you decide to do it in 2 days i will be coming to that i will give you the evidence to that right that can be found in chapter 2 verse 203 and remember god during the limited number of days but whoever hastens in 2 days then there is no sin upon him and whoever delays then there is no sin upon him for whoever is pious and beware of god and know that you will be assembled before god right so you can choose to do hajj in two days but minimum requirement it has to be 3 days and above right good now so we can see god doesn't even need the meat from you neither does he need blood from you he never ask you come and slaughter animal because i need your blood the blood neither the right need the meat he need the piousness Piousness means you are following God, you are serving God, you are dutiful, you follow his instructions. That is what God needs from you. Do you you get my point? Now, so for those who don't know the amount of livestock or the number of livestock animals they can use 
It, God, ne God never mentioned chicken. He didn't say go and slaughter fowl for him. You understand? And neither did he say you are slaughtering to come and give him meat. He only gave you what is required. Do you see how it goes? What is required from you? It's just like if I want to travel by a flight, aeroplane. They required my passport, my visa, and my plane ticket. Now, the moment I'm short of one of these items, I might be bounced. You understand? So in order for God to accept your piousness, you have to be in line to, uh, to do exactly what he requires from you. It's simple. It is as simple as it is. As it is. Simple. Good. Now, so when we say the concept of Hajj, here, somebody who does, who does Hajj, we call him Al-Hajj, that is a pilgrim. Somebody who does Hajj, we call him a pilgrim, right? So now let's see some of the examples here. If I take you to chapter 9, verse 19, let's see how God has used the concept of somebody who does Hajj, right? Chapter 9, verse 19, let's see. So God says, have you rendered the providing of water to a pilgrim? That is what? Al-Hajj. That is Hajj. Huh? Aja altum sikayat al-Hajj wa imarat al-Masjid al-Haram. Huh? Kaman amana billahi wal yawm al-Akhir. Wa jahada fi sabil illahi. Huh? La yastauna inda Allah. Wallahu la yahadil al zalimin. God says, have you rendered the providing of water, that is siyaka, to, to give somebody water to drink at the hajj, when he comes for hajj. And then the ones in charge, the Arabs who are in charge of that place, providing that water to you to drink. Because when you go, they, they form the water they call zamzam. Quran never mentioned something called zamzam. There's nothing like zamzam in the Quran. It is them who gave it the name zamzam. So Zamzam, that water they will give you to drink. God says, have you rendered the providing of water to a pilgrim and structure of the sacred mosque? Because whenever there's a problem with the building there, there's the masjid, they have to fix it and arrange and clean it and do everything. So God is now telling them, have they rendered the providing of water to a pilgrim and structure of the what? The masjid al-haram as one who believes in God and the last day and strives in the way of God, they are not equal in front of God. Right? So piousness is required of a person. It is not about going there in the Hajj, providing water to a pilgrim. When he comes, you think you are giving him water and then you go to paradise because you are taking care of the building and then you are taking care of the people coming for Hajj. No, no, that's not the case. So God says, they are not equal in front of God and God does not guide transgressing people. So if you like, take care of the building. Since you are a transgressor, you're out of coverage area. You understand? Uh -huh. So don't compare. Don't think that the people, they're giving water to the pilgrims. They are doing a, a very great job. No, it is about your piousness. The piety, piousness you have in your heart. Right? Good. Now, <clears throat> then again, when you go uh, to the Masjid al-Haram, we have people who are trying to cause injustice there. God further explains it in chapter 22, verse 25, in the chapter of the Hajj. He says, indeed, those who have disbelieved and repelled from the way of God and the Masjid al-Haram, which we have made from the people, mankind, and Nas, right? Whoever... Who uh, were in those abiding, that is, those who came to abide, the, the Majlul Haram. And then he says what? And the nomad are equal. The nomad are those who don't have a fixed place. They all move around and come, you understand? Are equal. When it comes to the Majlul Haram, everybody should be equal there. And whoever desires there in apostasy through injustice, then God says what? We will make him taste a painful punishment. So regardless of people taking care of the Majlul al-Haram and the Kaaba and they think there will be injustice, to do injustice to people, God will actually deal with them severely. Because remember, that house, God didn't say the house is for Arabs. Neither does he say the mosque is for Arabs. Even though it is on their what? Land. They have to be the caretakers of it. But it doesn't mean it belongs to them. It is made for the people entirely. If you get what I mean. Do you get the point? 
Now, so now when I take you to a place like, uh, let's see, when we go to chapter 8, verse 34, God says, but why should God not punish them while they are repelling from the sacred mosque and they were not its guardians? Its guardians are only those who are pious. Listen carefully. Its guardians are those are only those who are pious, but most of them do not know. Most of them, they don't know. Most of the people, they don't know that the guardians of the place has to be pious people. It doesn't have to be somebody who is in favor of Wahhabi, Sunnis, Shia, or, you understand, taking sides and say, oh, no, I'm not going to allow this kind of people here. No, it doesn't have to be that kind of people taking care of the masjid and the, sacri- and the Kaaba. No, it has to be pious people taking care of that place. Then God says, and their salat at the house was only singing and clapping. That is at the time of Muhammad, right? But now current time, their salat is only what? What the Sahih Bukhari has given them. Simple. Whilst the salat can be found in the Quran, the example is there, how to do the salat. Example is there. I'll give you the answer right now, right? So if you are doing a salat and your salat is not just as God, what God has given to the believers, you are out of coverage area. So some people will say, chapter 9, verse 5, why is it that God is telling you to, to do this against people who establish salat? Because they are mushriks. They are not doing it the way God asked them to do. Simple. So chapter 19, verse 58 to 59, tells you exactly how the salat was, was made and should be done. Chapter 19, verse 58 to 59 is there. But after the prophet, what did they, what happened? The people changed the concept of salat and brought something new. So don't be surprised. God, chapter 8, verse 35, God even told us some people's salat is what? Just singing and clapping. And they call that prayer. No, it cannot be. So there's the punishment for what you have been disbelieving. You understand? Concept of correct salat is can be found in chapter 19, verse 58 to 59. Yes. Aha. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so when it comes to Islam, following the, the, the ethics of the Quran, it has to do the creed of Abraham. We are following the footsteps of Abraham. He is the one who named us Muslims, according to chapter 22, verse 78, and then chapter what? 2 verse 128. He named and Muslims. He called us Muslims. We understand. So we are following his footsteps. And that is the creed of what? Abraham. Right? So God says, chapter 2 verse 130. Whoever desires other than the creed of Abraham is a fool. Because why will you desire another creed when God is showing you the creed of an honorable man you need to follow? So if you decide to go and follow Ali Sunnah, according to God, you are a fool. If you follow Shia, you are a fool. If you follow Ahmadiyya, you are a fool. If you follow Kadiria, whatever uh, Ria Ria you follow, you are a fool. I'm not saying it. God said it. Right? Any Akida you are following, and it's not the Millata Ibrahim, you are a fool. I'm not saying God said it. Come and challenge me on that. So you are a fool if you follow something else other than what God is instructing for you. So somebody will say, how do you know how to do Hajj if you don't follow Hadith? Are you a fool? Have you finished studying the Quran and you are seeing that God didn't explain? So for those who don't know, the, the criteria on how to follow, how to do Hajj, go to my YouTube channel. I have a topic called Hajj and the Umrah. I've explained from A to Z how to do the Hajj and the Umrah according to the Quran. Everything is there. Yes, everything is there the way God wants you to do. Somebody will say, what about the kissing of the black stone? God never asked you to go and kiss any garbage black stone. <laughs> no, nothing like black stone in the Quran. It doesn't exist. Somebody will say, what about stoning the devil? Are you nuts? How can you stone something you don't see? You think God will command you to do something stupid? No. So ask yourself, who is commanding you to go and stone the devil? You think the devil will leave places like America to go and sit in Saudi Arabia for you to come and stone him? Are you okay? Somebody who is even able to mislead your great-great-grandfather, Adam. That same person, you think he'll go and sit in Saudi Arabia for you, the foolish person, to come and stone him? Are you okay? Seriously. What is wrong with people? Stoning the devil? <laughs> when there are nightclubs in Finland and America and other places, so the devil should leave these sweet places and go and sit in Saudi Arabia because he's so dumb. <laughs> ah, these people are, are playing with their conscience. Wallah, You go and stone who? The devil? Are you serious? Somebody out of his smartness told God to respite him to the day of judgment. You think this same entity will go and sit in Saudi Arabia? 
Or do you think he doesn't have a navigator? That's why he's stuck there. For you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Zosan, Isan, that's how it goes. Even that's how the Bible the Christians also do. They follow certain things which are not in the Bible, like Christmas and Easter. It's not in the Bible, but they've celebrated. So these are concepts. People don't investigate what they are following. You see, so that's how they are made fools, like a sheep. So that's why God says, chapter 25, verse 44, do you think that most of them listen or reason? They are just like livestock. You know what livestock does, right? When you take the stick and you're like, sheep, 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 they start moving in group. Sheep, 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 sheep. Then they go like that. So that's exactly what people do. Huh? Hmm. Uh, yeah, Abu Bakasu. Yeah, I see you. What's up? Uh-huh, so... When it comes to Hajj, you need to understand. Let the Quran explain to you. It is nothing new. It is a concept which has been there for a long time. Don't come and give us jumble of uh, lexicon meanings and say it's the great debate. Hajj is the debate. Hajj is the argument. What, what foolishness is this? Who are these people? Huh? To make it easy for you, I said, come out, face me in a live dialogue. You say, oh, Brother Shrive says he's following the Quran. He's doing Salat. He's doing, no problem. I'm doing Salat. I do it the way the Quran wants me to do. I do Hajj. I'll do Hajj the way the Hajj Quran wants me to do. I'll do Ramadan. I'll do fasting the way Quran wants me to do. You say I'm lying. Come out for a dialogue. Let me embarrass you for the world to see your foolishness. Simple. You say I'm arrogant. No problem. Tagging a person is allowed. You call me an arrogant. I call you a fool. Simple. So let face off and see who is lying to the people. Stop misusing words, God's words and say, oh, this is uh, 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 Salat means following closely. Ask them, is it a verb? Is it an adjective? Is it a noun? What is it? Okay, what is the verb of following closely? Okay, no problem. What is the adjective? What is the noun of it? Is it a definite article? The following closely. Oh, I'm going to establish the following closely. Oh, it doesn't have an end. It doesn't have an end. Why God is telling me in chapter 4, verse 103, when you conclude, when you finish the salat. Oh, hello. You are saying it doesn't have an end. God says if I conclude. Seriously. So if it doesn't have an end, how come there are timings for it? You say I can do it anytime. How come God is telling me the time to do it? And you say, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, why, if it's not a ritual, why do I need to do ablution? Why do I need to wash any time I have goals of salat? Do they understand the meaning of ritual? Hello? What is a ritual? Yes, they are lost because they are following their desires and lexicons. And yet, Brother Shrib is doing you a favor. Just come for a live dialogue. Let me embarrass you for the world to see you refuse. I love embarrassment. So why don't you face me and embarrass me for my viewers to see? Ladies and gentlemen, now, the Quran, the hardcover, should be available before the end of this month. The, this is confirmed, inshallah. And the, the reason why it's delayed because I was collaborating with a company who, who can supply this to the people. It's called Natsal Enterprise. You know, so I wasn't, I wanted to do it in a professional way. I didn't want it to be whereby things are messed up. And you love the design this time. You love the hardcover. It's solid, pure. You, you enjoy it. For those who have read the, the PDF version, you can testify to how the design has been made. You love it, right? Uh, Abu says the volume is down. Well, I fixed the volume from my end. I don't know. Uh, you can adjust it from your side. Well, I fixed it. Yeah, you can check now and see, Abu. Check now in Siabu. Yeah, now you should. Yeah, volume is good because I, I can think most of people can can get what I said. Right. So my lectures is almost uh two hours now. Uh what I wanted to clear the misconception of the hatch, right? So the new moon, that is the crescent will be appearing in about five days time for the Zulhijjah. But you are still in the month of Hajj. This month is also good. So if you decide to do the fasting, you can do it now. If you cannot do any animal sacrifice, right? That is, if you don't have anybody to sponsor, to send money to, to do the animal sacrifice, right? Some people are based in Europe and they find it difficult to do that. Uh, Leticia Mami says, I cannot get PDF in my country, Sierra Leone. I have a different link where you can get it. 
when you can order it. The PDF, I put the link, it's called PayHip. PayHip. When you check on my page, you see it as an announcement. I put it up there, payheap.com. Uh, you, you search for Natsal Enterprise. It is there. You can get the copy of the Quran if you want to order. But then uh, the hard copy will be available for supply distribution all over the world, right? So Natsal Enterprise will be the official supplier and distributor of such books. So I will keep you updated, put up the info. Whoever is interested, you can do direct uh, collaboration with uh, Natsal to get the copy. But I will make sure I come here again to do the lectures and I will show you the hard copy. Uh, for those who have bought the old version, the old version, which was more like a trial, I will make sure for the new version, based on the pricing, if it is somewhere around the same price, I might compensate those people. Uh, or maybe we fix a way out where that, whereby they can get a discount on the new, the latest version. But then for people who are now ordering, we will find a way based on where you are, I can make a referral code or discount code whereby you can get it for the first maybe 50 people who order to get it affordable more easily so that you can show it to other people to, to, to enjoy. Because I've made it in such a way that every basic uh, pers uh, every basic beginner, somebody who, who wants to understand the basics of understanding the Arabic language of the Quran, I've made it word for word translation so that it can be easier. For, so, for those who have access to the PDF, you can testify for that. And that this Quran, I've made it in such a way, by the help of God, I've made it in such a way that it can be easier for people to cross check whatever people say based on the Quran. You cannot just take words out of context and lie and put your own understanding there. It's there, factual. You understand? So by the help of God, this is what I did. So I tried to put it out there. I know some people will say, okay, uh, if it's that case, why does it need to be sold? Remember, printing press is not free. Designing software is not free. My time, dedication is not free. What the sacrifice I'm doing doesn't mean I cannot spend my money to do it for people. I can do that. But you should also understand that those in charge of the printing presses are not in, uh, interested in your Islam. <laughs> they are interested in printing it for you. So they need your money. You understand? So it takes me time and effort to be able to do such things to get people to, uh, you understand, appreciate the work of God. So this is also my role to, you know, please God. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, it should be free. Oh, really? It should be free. Then your computer must be free as well. You shouldn't buy it. You should use your internet for free also. Remember that. So this is my, my, my way of also doing my favor to God. But I assure you, for those who bought before, the, the previous copy, that is two years ago, I'll make sure you get a referral code discount. If the price is reasonable, we can work things out. You might only pay for the shipping, then I can, I can send you the book free of charge. That is, if the pricing is not high enough, inshallah, we will work on that. Uh, Mood Hussein says, fasting 10 days in, is mandatory if not able to go hard, not able to sacrifice. Yes. If you are not able to go for the hajj, if you are not able to do an animal sacrifice, then you have to fast 10 days. But it shouldn't be consecutively. You can do it in, a, in sets, maybe two, two, you rest, or five days, then you rest and do the five days later. That is according to chapter 2, verse 196. The answer is there, right? Uh, yeah, let me see. Yeah, thank you very much, Fatima Chin. I appreciate the support. Ah, uh, yes, Nazkan, yes, I'm aware of that. Actually, I have I have the list of people who bought it, yeah, the, the, the first trial, the one I did. I have the list of the people who bought. But there is, I, I would say there is, there is an upgrade to that, and the design have changed uh, some things. I would say there is about 40% uh, upgrades that I've done. Right, so Ragaz, I'm coming. So people will enjoy the latest version more because if you read the latest PDF I've done that uh, is available, the PDF version of Great Quran, you'll see the updates, the upgrades that I've done. Of course, it doesn't mean the other one is totally out, no. But the, the point was the, the previous one was more like a trial and then the cover wasn't a hard cover. It was a paperback. 
but this time it's going to be a solid bag just like the previous uh sorry the Qurans you get from Saudi Arabia the hard cover that's how the cover is going to be and then the texture and the design has been improved right so you 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 love it i promise you on that uh Rashid Qur says is it possible to buy a paperback version of the Quran now yes now it will be in my possession before the end of this month inshallah so i'll i'll keep you updated i'll send you the link from the website you can get and on my page i'll put the link you can get it through paypal you can pay through paypal i'll send you all these necessary links for those who are interested in the hard copy version i will keep you updated with the lists and the pricing for that because there are different versions going to come there will be the black and white version whereby there is no arabic letters yeah sorry there will be arabic and then the translation no transliteration then there will be the one the original one that i want people to actually support which is the hard cover with the arabic transliteration and the translation that is what i suggest people to actually focus and get right so for those who are interested please you can inbox me send me a message just write type to me interested in the new quran then i can write your name down so as soon as i, I get the possession of it or collaborate with i'm collaborating with natsal enterprise that is when we can work out the list and see the people who need it maybe i send you an invoice or maybe you make the payment through natsal enterprise paypal account then we we move on from there inshallah so please bear with me i know it has delayed i was supposed to get it during the ramadan that it has delayed is due to the printing press and the arrangement and whatever have you so but finally i got the message that i should get it before the end of this month so inshallah we we should have it soon inshallah so ladies and gentlemen uh now i've done 2 hours of the program almost i was just here to elaborate people concerning the hajj so that they will know what to do and not to find themselves confused right so god says in chapter 17 verse 36 do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge if you don't have knowledge of something don't worry about yourself don't force it but seek knowledge ask for those who know who can prove to you and give you the evidences thank you rashid kohar uh salam brother bakari ajiz salam sister awa bashir thank you very much i appreciate your time and efforts yes uh thank you all i will try my best to fix up a program let's see uh uh let's see let's see let's see let's see uh yes and we are collaborating with uh with DHL with UPS uh, so that we can find a way to get it to people on time instead of delaying because last year i think last year last two years or last year i had a problem with delivery because of you know i wasn't collaborating with a company whereby we can supply but right now natsal enterprise will be the official distributor of the the great quran they refer to the quran and the controversial hadith books right so for anybody who is interested in that copy i will link you up with natsal enterprise whereby you can get the distribution whether 5 10 copies 20 copies you need we work that out you will get to distribute it and we make sure the prices will be available based on your location eh and affordable based on your location for those who are in, in europe i think they might enjoy it a, a bit more because uh, they are more closer but for those who are in let's say australia usa we work things out where we can have the you know price affordable and the posting affordable for you to afford inshallah i thank you all once again for the time and support uh now i need to attend to the family time we have to eat and then maybe see what happens next so inshallah i'll find a topic next topic uh next week then we can discuss and then i give the chance and room for questions and answers for those who want to talk on video who wants to have a contribution then we 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 talk about that and by the way i'm not advertising for frozen you see the picture behind me it is my daughter's picture she loves frozen i know most of your kids love frozen this so <laughs> This is not my sponsor. <laughs> Frozen is not my sponsor. This has to do with my daughter. That is her room. That is where I do my lectures. Uh thank you. Uh Murtaza Ramatullah, thank you very much. I appreciate the support. Eh uh, thank you Salis. Aga Kababa said thank you. Uh I appreciate your support. Uh 
Yes, obviously, I know. Uh -huh. So, uh, yes, Leticia, yes, I'll, you can inbox me. I will send you the link where you can get... Uh, uh, Townland Zilma says, I, I was just commenting about Frozen. Yes, Frozen is behind me. So, you know, the, the, the mushriks out there, they, they might tell you that Frozen are support, uh, is my sponsor. They, they like doing that, you know. When I told them to come out and, dis and prove to me they are, is they are Sunni, Shia, and whatever, I said 1,000 euro. They said I, 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 was, I was having sponsorship. So even if I'm having sponsorship, can't these people come out to disprove me and prove me wrong? Is it a big deal? Prove me wrong and take my 1,000 euro away. It's easy. Yeah, Kamara, Medkra, I see you. So I don't know why they are scared of me. I don't have horns. You know, I don't have horns, but they are scared. I don't know, please. So tell these mushriks. That I'm always available. You can see the last time I was supposed to have a dialogue with somebody from Nigeria who claims he's a Sunni. At the last minute, he bow out. He says his scholars say he shouldn't do it. And this is not the first time they are doing that. Most of them, they, are, they tell me at the last hour, they say, my scholars say I shouldn't do it. What are they scared of? If your scholar says you shouldn't do it, let your scholar himself come out. I would love to be embarrassed. I'm waiting to be embarrassed. So come and embarrass me on a live program so that people can see that I'm lying. It's simple, but I don't know why they are not coming. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the time and patience and the support. I appreciate it. Peace be upon you all, and thank you all once again. Assalamu alaikum.